Good morning, dear students, and welcome to tutorial number four, second tutorial which is provided with videos. Today we will talk about OLAP. It's related to the theory in the lecture, but we, I will talk also slightly about the theory so that you understand the context when we do the exercises. If we talk about online analytical processing, it's also nice to know what's online transaction processing is. So these are two kinds of processing. It's two kinds of work that we can do with the databases. And online transaction processing, it's a kind of work with the database when we have very, very, very many small transactions. So we every transaction, it has not lots of data but we have really a lot of such transactions. You can imagine it as, for example, what happens in the shop on the cash desk. Every transaction with the database is quite small, but the requirement is that this transaction should be really fast because you don't want your customers stand in a queue. So the system should work really fast. And online analytical processing, it's quite another thing because uh, here we work with lots of data. We want to analyze it, like get me aggregated sales for the whole year. Speed is not so critical for us. Of course, we don't want to sit one hour to get a report, but if we wait several seconds for one query, it's not a problem. And then every transaction is more or less complicated. We don't get the record of only one sale. We want to get several records. And today we will talk about the OLAP. OLAP can be implemented in many, many different ways in practice, but the data is normally imagined and represented in the form of cube. One, like you see here, this cube it's said its conceptual model of sales cube, so that's how we can imagine sales uh, data. And then this cube have has different elements. Elements are listed on the next slide. We will go now through element to element to understand what this element means. So first and most important element, it's a fact or facts. Also the synonym is measure. We had this concept before on the last tutorial when we talked about pivot tables and power pivot. So fact or measure is exact data which is stored in the cube. If in this cube we have sales data, it means that measure of fact it's some sales amount per month, per year, per day, per transaction, and so on. And of course, to then to analyze this data, we use dimensions. On this cube, we have three dimensions. So every dimension, it can be imagined as a verge of this cube. We have time dimension, geography dimension, and product dimension. We could have also customer dimension, employee dimension, and many other kinds of dimensions to somehow aggregate and analyze the data that we have. And every dimension, it has attributes. Attributes, for example, for the time dimension, it would be years, then it would be also uh, months, days, hours. So these are kinds of elements, types of elements that are part of the dimension. These elements, they are always somehow organized. And the name of organization of the elements is called hierarchy. Often uh, hierarchy, the name of hierarchy is the same as the name of dimension. So we would call, if we were asked what hierarchies do we have for this cube, we could say that we have time hierarchy. And this time hierarchy, it organizes attributes of time dimension. Levels. Levels are related to hierarchies and they show uh, how attributes in a hierarchy are related one into each another. So if in time hierarchy we have uh, years, months, and days, you can understand that the first level of time hierarchy this is years. It could be also centuries. 
Then the next element is the months. So every year consists of several months. And then every month consists of days and so on. And the last thing is members. And members, these are exact concrete data. It's basically exact elements of the dimension. So in the time dimension, exact elements is 2002. Yes, this is the year attribute, but exact element is 2002. Or it's, for example, June in 2002. These are members. On the next slide, you have examples of all these elements of the cube. As I said before, there are many ways to implement OLAP, but we can strategically divide all the tools into two categories. First category, these are specialized tools that are created for OLAP analytics. And in these tools, we will have a look at one of these uh, tools today. Data is uh, initially represented as a cube. So uh, the way the data represented, it's very, very, very close to this conceptual understanding of the cube. And another way to uh, implement OLAP analytics, it's just to use the standard normal relational database. And with when we use tables and relationships in the relational database, we can also define different dimensions and facts or measures in the data that we have, and we can represent it in the structure very close to the cube. We will start from this uh, tools which are specifically designed for OLAP. One of these tools is uh, Microsoft SQL Analysis Services. Of course, there are many, many other tools. You have here a description of what this is, but how it basically works. Normally, uh, you have a server which is located somewhere in the cloud. This server, it uh, stores all the data in all up format in the cube format and then to make analysis of this data you use a client software for example for sql services it's microsoft excel this client software lets you access the server and its data and then in this uh, software you perform all the analytics in microsoft excel it looks as you just build the pivot tables. So you access the cube data, but at the very end, you build the pivot tables that we had a look in previous tutorials. Uh, and now we have an exercise. It will be based not on the server because we don't have access to the SQL services. It will be based on the screenshot from the cube of the cube data. This file is provided to you. It's called SuperCube. And we will access this data and it, the process will look very similar to one which you would have if you would access the server itself. So in the exercise, we want to analyze the sales data for subcategories of furniture products. So we can imagine that it will be the product dimension of the cube data and by quarters of 2007 and 8, which is time dimension. As the first step, we need to access this data in SuperCube file. You have description how to do it in the slides, and we will do it now also together step by step. So I go to the folder where I have SuperCube file, and I create Excel worksheet. I can give any name to it. So tutorial four. So here is the empty Excel worksheet. And now to import data, I go on the data tab, then get data from database. Exact menus might differ depending on the version of Excel that you have. Oh, I didn't have to press it. Okay. 
So it's data, get data from database, and then from analysis services. Here I mask the server name, and as a server name, I enter the path to the file and file name itself. To the file, I mean to this uh, supercube file. So on my computer, it's saved in this folder, which I can just copy the path to it and insert in the server name, then backslash, and then the name of the cube file, which is supercube cup. Next. Here I have nothing to choose except super cube, cube data. So I press next. And here uh, we want to change this friendly name. So we'll use this database in formulas later and to put to input such a long name, not so convenient. So I will change this name to super cube C O N N underscore and then C O N N. Finish. I have some error because I did this import before. So I press yes, substitute the file, and then uh, we are asked what we want to do with the data. We want to perform analysis in the pivot table. We could only create the connection or instead of pivot table create a pivot chart but we will look at the data in the pivot table and existing worksheet yes it's okay so press okay and now we have the new pivot table created it looks very similar to what we did before now if i look in the field and in the field list it looks similar to the previous tutorial but there are several differences First of all, instead of the field list for normal pivot tables and instead of the table list for the pivot tables really, which are based on the power pivot, here we have uh, something like submenu with the sum sign and then order. And this is basically the list of the measures of facts that we have in this cube. It's discount, order count, quantity profit, sales, which we are asked to analyze in this exercise, and so on. I can press on this uh, icon to close the uh, measures. And then we have uh, other sub-elements, which have the icon similar to, which looks as a table. And these are exactly the dimensions present in this cube. So here we have customer dimension, order ID or order dimension, order date, which is time dimension, but this is specifically related to the order date of the um, invoice, then product and ship date. These are the dimensions. And in the next step, of this exercise, we are asked to identify cube elements in the loaded data. So the facts, as we discussed one minute ago, facts are uh, all here under the sign of sum. These all are facts or measures. Now dimensions. Let's look, for example, at here we ask time dimension. Let's look at the order date dimension. And if I expand it, I see here uh, I can do two choices, more fields and calendar date. And this calendar date, this is exactly the hierarchy. So this is the hierarchy of the order date. And more fields, these are attributes that are not part of this hierarchy. So if I expand calendar date hierarchy, I see here the attributes of this hierarchy, which are year, quarter, and month. And of course, the way they are represented here, also they represent the levels. So on the top level, we have year attributes, then quarter, and then months. We don't hear 
have here the deeper levels like day or hour in the calendar date hierarchy. I can go to the product dimension and I see that there is another hierarchy which is called product groups. It also has some attributes organized according to top level, middle level and bottom level. Okay, we looked at the hierarchies at the levels and now let's look at the members. Let's go back to the order hierarchy. Since we work on, with the pivot table, I can drop this hierarchy to the columns to have date or time dimension as a horizontal dimension for the columns. And then uh, what I see, I see 2008, 2009, 2010. These are basically the members of the dimension and of the hierarchy. If I go deeper, I see another members like waters, months, and this each uh, value, these are specific members of this uh, dimension, calendar uh, order date, and of hierarchy calendar date. All right, so next, what we are asked to do, it's basically to prepare this uh, table, pivot table. We see that in the columns, we have time dimension and its quarters of 2007 and 2008. And in the rows, these are categories of the furniture products. And of course, as a measure, we, we use sales. During this process, we are also asked to think about operations which are performed on the cube data. So, so the operations. There are how many? One, two, three, four, five basic operations with all of cube. These operations are defined on the conceptual level, but we will see now how exactly it could be these operations are performed in the pivot table, in the implementations that we have. First, it's pivoting. If we look at this uh, data, pivoting is basically when we rotate this cube and we change how the data is represented. So now, I go back to the pivot table. I have already years here. I want to add products for starters so that we have rows and columns. So here we have product, here we have time dimension, and this can be imagined as one facet of the, of the cube that we have. It's one facet. I want to add here the measure. The measure is sales. I go to measures and drop sales to values so i have sales now pivoting would mean that instead of for example dimension time dimension i will use some other kind of dimension let's see what kind of dimension we can use i will uh, throw throw away the columns calendar date and use something else what looks uh, differently so Let's see at the customer, we have customer geography. So it's quite nice. We can use in the columns geographical dimension. So this was the pivoting operation. I will pivot it again and bring back the time dimension. Next operation is slicing and dicing. It's a quite similar operation. So what is uh, slicing? So uh, you have a definition here. It defines a cube with one fewer dimension by selecting a single member for one of the dimensions. So for example, here on this cube, what slicing operation would mean? It would mean that, for instance, for the dimension of time, for years, we uh, choose only, select only one year. So we filter by only one year and we get as a result oh i can draw here as a result we get only one slice of this cube like this slice that's why it's called slicing let's do the same in pivot table let's choose 
we can choose only one year or let's choose only one uh, category of the product. We can do it in many different ways. We can add uh, here to the pivot table slicer and that's basically why it's called slicer. We did it with these operations with slicers uh, on the previous uh, tutorials. I will not use slicer, I will use filter directly in the list of fields that we have. So if I go now to the product, I know that my task is to work only with the furniture um, category, so I will just apply filter for the pr product category and I will choose only furniture category. And now you see I will slice, I will get the result only this one row or one slice of my cube data. Now, what is Dyson? So Dyson, it defines a subcube by performing a selection on section of two or more dimensions. So Dyson is the same as slicing, but instead of choosing only one member, here was example only 2002, we might choose 2002 and 2001. So we dice, we take knife and cut line, cut off the top two rows, top two pieces, top two slices from this cube. And we see that this operation is quite uh, similar to slicing, but we choose multiple members. In the exercise, I'm asked to make prof to make uh, analysis on for years 2007 and 2008. That's why I want to filter or to choose only these two columns. And since I choose not one column, which is a slicing operation, I choose two columns, so it will be Dyson operation. I will, I could also add here slicer or timeline slicer, but I will simply apply the filter to the order date dimension. And here, year name, I will choose 2007 and 2008, so I will deselect all the other years. 7 and 8, and I press OK. Good. We see when I did this for the year name, it also applied filter to quarters. Because every year it consists of quarter and it automatically deselected quarters of that years that I filtered out. So this was Dyson operation. The next, oper next operation is roll up. Roll up it's kind of operation we see here on the example when we go from detailed representation of the data of some dimension to the less detailed representation. Here we go from months to years. And uh, right away when we talk about roll up we can talk about drill down. Drill down it's opposite to roll up it's when we go from the when as we see here on the example from the more aggregated representation of data to less aggregated. We subdivide this member into dimension somehow. Here we go from year to month. So let's try drill down on the data that we have here. We have years, but in the exercise and for the demonstration we can drill down to quarters. Drill down because we go from the more aggregated data, which is aggregated to years, to quarters. In pivot table, I can do it by pressing this plus, and it works because we have hierarchy defined in the cube data. Therefore, when I press this plus, I go from the top level of ha time hierarchy to the next level, which is quarter. Now, when I have data uh, aggregated by th the quarter, of course, if I will press now this what looks like a minus, I will perform an operation of roll up. Another way to 
do this drill down and roll up. For example, if I would like now to see quarters only for 2007, I can press with right mouse on 2007, and here I have in the contextual menu, I have drill down, drill up. It's called not roll up, but drill up. And I can press drill down. And what will it do? It will first perform the slicing operation and will filter out only 2007. And then it will go down le one level to the quarters. If I again press on the quarter and choose drill up, it will go up where it was, but now uh, filters which I applied before, they uh, disappeared. So I will apply them again. This were uh, all the operations which we needed. So again, we, as a final solution for this uh, exercise, I want to show the quarters for 2007 and 2008, and I want to uh, show the subcategories of the furniture uh, category. And then the data of sales, which I wanted to get. Let's now look at the cube functions. We use uh, Excel cube functions for the case when we don't want to use pivot tables with cube data so for the for instance if we want to use data directly in um, excel cells in excel worksheet without using the pivot table cube functions can be found in the function under the functions uh, list under the category cube every cube function it consists of two parts it's and the X expression is a special expression a language to access cube data, and it also can uh, include Excel formulas. We will now look on the example. And these cube functions, they can be used for cube data, but also for the power pivot data. To use it with power pivot uh, data, we need to specify the source name, uh, this string, this workbook data model. We will now look at the example of cube value function today to have a feeling of how this function works. Work. And exercise, exercise two for MOLA, it's we're asked to create table in Excel which looks as this table. It's a normal Excel table. So uh, this values this our normal text and here we have data about profit but this data is taken from the cube to import it into the excel in the current worksheet that we have i have created the prototype of the table so this all it's simply the uh, text in the worksheet and we want to add now data here in this cells and let's start uh, from the data of profit, total profit for the year 2009, for the product Hon Metal Bookcase Black, whatever it means, and the product container Jumbo Box. So before we start writing formula, let's find clo look closer where can we find this product. So if I go back to the pivot table, and then here I can uh, check uh, the product dimension under category furniture and in the subcategory bookcases I can look at the products at the exact products which are in the category um, bookcases I can see that here we have this product whole me Hon metal bookcases black so we know where uh, this product is located in the product hierarchy it's in furniture bookcases and then comes this product and if i look at the product bash mission point a library again i'm not sure what that is it's also located in the bookcase sub category 
And now the Jumbo box, it's product category. And this member, it's outside of the product hierarchy. So if I will go back to the pivot table, I go to the product dimension and I have here uh, not product but product groups hierarchy. So this is exactly where I see product category, product subcategory, and then product name. Product name, it is Hon Metal, bookcase black, and so on. But if I go to the more fields, here I see product, the container, and this field is outside of the product groups hierarchy. Yes, and uh, here it's the attribute of order date, date dimension, calendar date hierarchy. All right, so now let's start writing the formula for 2009 for the first product. So we start formula as any formula in Excel with equal sign in the cell. And then we will use the function cube, cube value to get the value of measure from the cube data. And the first argument is a connection. This argument is a string. So to start writing it, I open the quotation mark. And Excel already suggests me the name of the connection. I could write here this uh, workbook data model to use power pivot data if i have any uh, but uh, we will use a uh, cube data and you see that now it shows the name of the data cube and we define this name as a friendly name during the process of uh, connection creation so i can double click on this suggestion and then close the quotation mark next argument which i write down it's member expression i can provide here many different member expressions this member expression this argument it's also the string but uh, the string it's uh, represents a specific mdx language and this language it's used to access uh, cube data so let's again open the quotation mark and then we get very handy suggestions and the first, so member expression, we want to specify here which values to choose or which measures to choose and how to filter them. So first we choose the measures, then we place dot to get access to all the measures which are present in the data model. And we want to make calculations for profit. That's why I can go with the keyboard down to profit, press tab, and close the quotation mark. This means that we want to calculate the total profit. Basically, I could now uh, finish writing and so finish this formula and press enter. And what this number shows me is the total profit of our company for all the years because I didn't specify here any kind of additional filters. Now, I will add the member expression as the next argument to the cube value function. And here I want to write down that I want to make find the profit for this specific product. So again, I start the string, string with a quotation mark. I want to go to the product dimension. Then I press dot. And then here I can choose product groups, which is a hierarchy, or product container, which is a field outside of the hierarchy. I choose product groups, press tab, then I put dot, and here in the product groups, so here uh, for product groups I choose furniture, because uh, Hon Metal bookcase is a part the member of furniture yes furniture i can write now i bookcases and now the exact name of this product which is 
Hon Metal Bookcase is black. And I can close this string. And the next member which I want to specify right away is a product container jumbo box. So we will um, only filter by that products which were delivered in jumbo box or which are stored in jumbo box. I open the start the string product dot product container dot and here I write down jumbo box. Uh, jumbo box. All right, let's try whether this works. Doesn't work. Jumbo box was written with error. Yes, now it shows the profit, but still this profit, it's not filtered for 2009. So we didn't specify the member of time dimension. I will add this filter by 2009, add it as a member expression, again open the quotation mark, then order date dot, it is a calendar date dimension dot, then the member is year name, I'm not sure why it's not showing the suggestion for the year name, the next Man has the level in the hierarchy, then dot, and then I can specify the exact year. It's 2009, and we can close the string. All right, and we have the value 33 was the profit in 2009. Now, if I want to do the same for Bash Mission Point F for the next product, I can just copy this formula down. Of course, when I copy it, I get the same value because all the expressions here, they are hard coded, right? And uh, I can manually now right here instead of the Hon Metal bookcase black, I can write down the name of this product. But what if I would have the 20 products or 100 and for each of them I would like to calculate this uh, measure. It would be really not convenient manually change this formula and arguments of the function. And therefore because of that I can dynamically specify that here instead of this product we should take the value from the column A. Since it is the string, I can use string concatenation. In particular I can now delete this Hon Metal bookcase from the string. I can add two quotation marks, so it means that I have now here first string, this is the second string, uh, this basically square bracket to the right. And here I want to insert, instead of an empty space, I want to insert the contents of this A4 cell. So I use ampersand, which means it is a concatenation operator in Excel. Then I write down here A4, and then one more ampersand. So it will concatenate first string, with the contents of contents of A4 and with the square bracket at the very end. Let's check whether it works. It works, at least it provides another value. And the same we can do for the year. If I want now to copy this value or to do exactly the same calculation for this product but, but for 2010, I can, one approach is I can substitute here in the function 2009 with 2010 but of course I can also say that instead of this 2009 insert the content of cell of cell C2 
So we add here two ampersands and write C2, contents of C2. And now uh, when I press enter, theoretically, value shouldn't change. And it didn't change. Now I can drag it to the right, so it will dynamically change the year from C column C to column D. But of course, also the product uh, cell, since it's the relative reference, it moved to the right. I want to bring it back to the column A. I could use a fixed references, but I don't want to make it more complicated, so I'll just move it to the A4. Yes, and we got uh, the values which are taken from the cube data and they are presented in the worksheet without the pivot table. And in addition to the MDX expressions, which are basically this, we used also and incorporated it with the Excel references and formulas to make this solution more dynamic. I can put here instead 2010 now 2011. And well, probably there is no any data for 2011. Let's try 2008. So it's 2000. Yeah, there is some data for 2008. We can dynamically change it. This was uh, everything for mall app. So for the tools that we use with the data natively represented as a cube. We looked how we can import data to the client software, in this case Excel. We looked at the operations with the cube data and with some uh, tools presented in Excel, in particular pivot tables and cube functions.